guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Anna. I'm a clinical psychology doctoral candidate and today we're talking about what to do on a bad body image day. If you like this type of content, make sure to hit like and subscribe so that you can see every new video. So let's just go right into it. Bad body image days. This video is for anyone with body dysmorphia eating disorders, or just general struggles with body image. Now, the entire concept of a bad body image day is in the name itself. It feels like it's permanent or like it's going to last forever when it comes, but you really have to remind yourself that this is a temporary setback. So that's the first thing you do when a bad body image day flares up, to remind yourself that this distress or self-disgust or general gross feeling will not last forever. In the past, think about it, how long has it usually lasted? Maybe half a week at most? And I'm not talking about feeling dissatisfied with your weight or your body overall. What I'm talking about is specific flare-ups in your own bodily perception or distress. Because you know, our body image tends to fluctuate like this. Some people, of course, are lower, like here but there are always some dips from the baseline and that's really what I'm talking about here. It could be that maybe you're feeling bloated, maybe it's a menstrual cycle related fluctuation, maybe your mind is responding to external stress, maybe someone made a comment about your looks, maybe one of your triggers appeared. There are a multitude of reasons why this could be happening. It's great if you can pinpoint what factors specifically led to this happening at this point, but at the very least understand that this is probably going on psychologically or externally, not something with your actual body. So that's the first thing to realize. Now, I also suggest you do the opposite action for the emotions you're probably feeling right now, which are usually disgust and shame. I don't know if you remember opposite actions from my DBT series. This is a way of regulating your emotions. So you're really doing the exact opposite of your instinct. Your instinct might be to cover yourself up, punish yourself by restricting or working out, isolate yourself, avoid going out or seeing people, insult yourself, reassure and seek from other people. So the opposite actions, a lot of the different tips that I'm gonna give right now are examples of opposite actions to those instincts. So first of all, don't avoid. Still wear what you want to wear, still go to that event or hang out like you were planning to, still take photos, don't skip class or the party that you were gonna go to. The second thing, instead of insulting yourself, treating yourself disrespectfully, Treat yourself with kindness. Take a bath and caress yourself as you wash and exfoliate and moisturize like you would treat someone that you love rather than someone you hate. Be patient with yourself. Take things slower, give yourself some leeway. Treat yourself the way you would treat a loved one who's having a bad day. You can pamper yourself with some of your favorite foods, movies, music, friends, activities. This concept is in one of my videos called Do This on a Bad Day. I think it'll be up here. And it really goes in depth on what to do when you're having a really bad day and how to really pamper yourself like it is your special day. If you feel the impulse to insult yourself either internally or vocally, don't. Acknowledge the impulse, but let it go. Or alternatively, write it down on a piece of paper and look at what an ugly, abusive thought it is. How would you feel if a friend said this about themselves? Or what if someone else said it to someone that you care about? Would it ever be something socially acceptable or kind to say to someone? If not, then why are you saying it yourself? Also make yourself comfortable. Wear something really soft and comfy, not necessarily form hiding, which might be your instinct, but it could be if that's what's most comfortable to you. Also move your body in a gentle and joyous way. It could be something like yoga, stretching, an online sculpt class, a walk. Like I said, you don't wanna be punishing your body and over-exercising compulsively or you know doing things that are going to serve as a punishment or to appease your anxiety. You wanna do something that treats you still with kindness and something that's gentle. In terms of you know what should you eat, Neither overeat nor restrict, and don't compulsively exercise either, like I said. Eat exactly as you normally would, and this way you won't mess up your metabolism, end up binging, or relapse into disordered eating. Try to really eat as intuitively as possible. Don't force yourself to eat, but also don't silence your hunger cues. If you feel like grapes, get grapes. If you feel like cookies, get a cookie. And what if your intuition is telling you to get one of your guilt foods, something that would make you feel 
much worse in that moment. Work through that, really sit in the discomfort or the distress of still eating what you want to eat. Or if it's too distressing for you, get a similar alternative that's just a little less anxiety inducing. Like for example, if you really crave Ben and Jerry's chunky monkey ice cream, but the idea of having any is giving you a panic attack, gradually expose yourself to, let's say, some Halo ice cream. If you really crave buttery popcorn, but the idea of it makes you go into a rage, have some skinny pop. The point is not to replace your desired food or to engage with these food rules. The point is to work your way up and to build on your victories. If you think about food very behaviorally, it's a hierarchy where at the top of the hierarchy, you have the most anxiety producing foods and at the bottom, the least anxiety producing. So you really wanna start at the bottom and slowly work your way up so that you're not overwhelming your body and your mind so that you're not gonna relapse right away and do a complete 180. That's again, not for me to say that if you want Ben and Jerry's, you shouldn't have Ben and Jerry's. If you feel like you can handle it, by all means do. Something else to do is to reach out to others. Your impulse when you're feeling this way might be to avoid or to isolate yourself. So reaching out to others is again, the opposite action. But don't reassure and seek when you're doing this. You don't need to tell them they are having a bad body image day. You could if you need support and they're able to support you properly, but it should be enough to just throw yourself into a conversation about something else. Ask them how they're doing. Distract yourself from your own pain by focusing on helping someone else. And also get your mind and your body focused on something else along the same lines. It could be socially, but it could be something else as well. It could be a movie, meditation, a walk, work, art, or some kind of creative endeavor. It could be tidying up, it could be reading, whatever gets you the most distracted from your pain. Something else to do is to practice body neutrality. So this is when you look in the mirror and you're just saying neutral statements about yourself. Like, I have dark curly hair. I have brown eyes. I'm wearing a black shirt. A lot of the times people with poor body image don't necessarily think that they're the ugliest person in the world, but appearances are such a core value to them that not being outwardly perfect is something which colors their entire experience. Like maybe they are self-conscious with friends, they get in a bad mood, it affects their decisions about what to eat, whether to exercise, what to wear, where to go. In practicing body neutrality, you're lowering the importance that you place on appearances as a value. And you're learning to be okay with not being in love with how you look. Maybe you're not the most attractive person in the world, but so what? That's not that important. And the last tip that I have is to write down what specific body parts are giving you distress and approach them with no shame but the intention to resolve your feelings about them, to accept them about yourself. So for example, if you say, I hate my arm fat, just writing it down takes away some of its power because that's the thing about shame. Once you actually take it from inside you and put it out into the world, you realize how it's really not something to be ashamed of and actually it's kind of an abusive thought. Telling someone trusted can also help. You might be terrified to do this because you're thinking, no, I don't want them to see this about me, then they can never unsee it and they're gonna think the worst of me. But chances are you're really over inflating how big this defect is. And they're going to look at you and wonder, huh, I never would have noticed that. And you're gonna feel validated. And then also try to focus your attention on that body part or insecurity with a loving, gentle attitude essentially exposure therapy, like I was talking about with the exposure hierarchy earlier. So maybe you massage your arm in a loving or kind way where you might normally hide it behind, you know, very big oversized shirts and try to not point it out. You would tell someone about your insecurity and then you would bring your attention to it in a very neutral way. You would be practicing body neutrality, treating it with kindness. So these were my tips. I feel like I missed something. So let me know in the comments if you have something else to add. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I hope you're having a great day and hope you have a great rest of the week.